Between spam cookies, apples, and ice cream sandwiches, technology is making me quite unhealthy. And this weekend, we're going to focus on the juiciest new piece of technology on the plate called a Raspberry Pi. It's a $35 mini computer, and I'll show you how to get it up and running and set it up as a web server. This is a Raspberry Pi B, a $35 credit card sized computer that all the hardware hackers are raving about. If you're planning on getting one, here's a basic guide to set it up and run a simple web server. But before we start, let's check that we have all the necessary hardware components to make this work. A micro USB cable for power, an HDMI or composite video cable to connect it to a TV or monitor, a network cable, a USB keyboard, and a blank 2 GB SD card or larger to load the operating system. Alright, now the first step is to install the Raspberry Pi operating system, which you can download from here. There's a few different options, but I'm going to be using the Debian Squeeze version. This gives you an image file of the operating system that you can then burn to your SD card. And to burn it, we need another free tool called the Win32 Disk Imager, which you can find here. Open it up, make sure your SD card drive letter is selected, navigate to your Debian image, and then click right. When it's through, pop the SD card into your Raspberry Pi and plug in your hardware. You want to plug the mini USB cord in last to give it power. When Debian loads, you'll be prompted to log in. The default username is Pi and the default password is Raspberry. Go figure. If you just want to use this as a mini computer, you can plug in a mouse, type start X, and boot into the desktop environment. But that's not what we want to do. We want to make a remote server. So getting back to the command line, let's enable remote SSH connections by typing this line, which you can copy at the wiki page below. And then write down the IP address for the Raspberry Pi before typing reboot. Um, I mean, pseudo reboot to reboot the device. Now you can unplug the keyboard and monitor from your Raspberry Pi because we can do the rest of the project remotely using SSH. What you can do now if you have Windows is download PuTTY, an SSH client. Just launch it and type in the Raspberry Pi IP address for the host name that we wrote down earlier and click open. It'll ask you if you want to cache the keys, so just click yes. And now log in with Pi and Raspberry like we did before. For security reasons, let's first change the default password. So type sudo passwd and Pi. Hit enter and type in a secure password to use. Now let's update the repositories. And then use apt-get to install the Apache and PHP files for your Pi device. If you want something lighter than Apache, you can also install the Cherokee web server, which I've detailed on the wiki, but I'm just going to go with the more popular one for now. You'll notice that a portion of the installation fails before it finishes. So to fix this, add a www-data user group and mod it, then restart your Apache server. Now if you type in your Pi's IP address into your web browser, it should bring up the It Works Apache page. One more quick thing we need to do with Apache is enable the HT access files. So type this and then find the second allow override none line and change it to allow override all. Then hit control X and then Y for yes. So what do you do if you want to change or edit the files on the web server? Well, the easiest thing to do is to set up an FTP server. To do this, we need to change the ownership of the www server directory first, and then install vsftp using apt-git. After that, we need to edit the vsftp comp file using nano. Hit control W to search for anonymous underscore enable, and change that line so that it says no. Uncomment the local underscore enable line and the write underscore enable line. Now skip to the end of the document and add force underscore dot underscore files equals yes. Now hit control X to exit, Y to save, and enter to confirm. After that, just restart the FTP server. Now we need to set the FTP folder equal to our website server folder. 
But to do that, we need to log in as a root user. So first, let's set a password for the root user and then exit out of PuTTY altogether. Open it back up and now log in as root instead of pi with our newly set password. Next, let's edit the password file and find the pi line and then just comment it out. Now exit out of it and save it. After that, let's add the pi username as a mod for the www folder. Now you can exit out of PuTTY again and then just log back in as your normal pi user with the corresponding password. Type usermod capital L root and that's it. You can now exit out of PuTTY and start up an FTP client and enter in your FTP information, which should be the IP address of your Pi device, port 21, and your Pi username and password. Then just edit and upload the files like you would with a regular web server. Be sure to check out my previous videos if you need help with making a website or with port forwarding through your router. Also, if you want to go further with this and add PHP or MySQL to your server, I've detailed those steps at the wiki link below. For more tutorials, be sure to check out Tinkernut.com, and until next time, hack some fun into your weekend.